Good afternoon, everybody. Squeeze on up. There are plenty of chairs. Well, not plenty, but there are some chairs. There are some. <laughs> Just watch out for my camera there. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the family, we would like to thank all of you for uh, coming today. I hope I can be heard. Okay. Uh, you have the order of uh, events, and so um, I'd invite you to join us in singing. The first uh, hymn will be Abide With Me.
Robert Sr.'s oldest grandchild, my son Jonathan Robert Towell, is going to come now and read the obituary. Robert Henry Tao, also known as Bob, and Papa, Papa Bob, Papa. Anybody else? Did I miss anything? Bob. Bob, Bob that's right, Bob. <laughs> <coughs> Lived his life as a faithful Christian and a devoted son, husband, father, uncle, father in love, grandfather, and great grandfather. Born on February 19th, 1931, in Weezer, Idaho. Bob passed away on March 12, 2024 at home in Round Rock, Texas at the age of 93. He comes from and leaves us with a long heritage of faithfulness and devotion. Bob is survived by his beloved wife of 68 years, Janice Reagan Towell, son of Robert, married to Judy Towell, Jr. of Bryan, Texas, daughter Judy is married to Mel, Witcher of Austin, Texas, Brother Dick Towell of Puyallup, Washington. Grandsons Jonathan, married to Lori Towell of Lubbock, Texas. Daniel, married to Stephanie. Uh, Witcher of Neosho, Missouri. Granddaughters Laura, who's married to Brian. Metz of Northwood, New Hampshire. Reagan, who's married to Travis. Guthrie of Edmond, Oklahoma. Anna, who's married to Alex. Meredith of Gwen, Missouri, or Michigan, excuse me and uh, Emily Witcher of Austin, Texas, as well as 11 great-grandchildren and extended family and friends around the world. Bob is preceded in death by his parents and his brother, Leroy. Bob was the eldest of three sons. His father, Henry, was a preacher, well-known throughout the Western states. The brothers enjoyed many adventures together, including a science experiment in the attic, which left a hole in the ceiling and required apologies to the neighbors for the fright it caused. Bob met the love of his life, Jan, when they were both members of the same wedding party. She caught his eye immediately, and the rest is history. They were married August 26, 1955 in Kansas City, Kansas, and honeymooned on their drive to Raleigh, North Carolina, where Bob finished his schooling. After graduation, Bob and Jan moved to North Augusta, South Carolina, where Bob turned his early interest in science and math into a career as a nuclear scientist, working at the Savannah River plant for 30 <coughs> years. He and Jan later moved to Washington, D.C. to work for another 13 years for the Department of Energy and Eagle Research as an expert in the transportation of radioactive materials. While they were in South Carolina, their children, Rob and Judy, were born. Bob was a hands-on daddy who delighted in his family, taking them on many memorable weekends to the Charleston beach and cross-country road trips each summer in a station wagon towing a pop-up camper trailer. He was always immensely proud of his children and their accomplishments, particularly in piano and band. Bob served as the scoutmaster of the local Boy Scout troop for years, becoming an influential father figure to many young men. He led the family and Boy Scout troop in many projects, including building a huge retaining wall and pool in the backyard and woodworking in the basement. He was instrumental in establishing the North Augusta Church of Christ in the 60s and later served as an elder there and in Olney, Maryland. After the kids were grown up, he went on more adventures with Jan throughout the Northeast while they lived in the DC area, on mission trips to Romania, Ukraine, New Zealand and Thailand, as well as adventures to Greece and Ireland. Bob and Jan also developed and led marriage seminars for a number of years in various homes, blessed many young couples with their insights for wisdom and marriage. Upon retirement to Round Rock at the age of 70, Bob joyfully threw himself into enjoying time with his grandchildren and teaching himself new skills, such as baking bread and sewing his own curtains and Barbie clothes for Emily. The grandchildren and great-grandchildren treasure many special memories of family traditions, including making strawberry shortcake with Papa Bob for breakfast during the holidays. Upon his retirement, Bob joined Jan in her work with the World English Institute. Bob's passion for helping others shines through in his support of WEI. To paraphrase the words of Dick Eighty, 
co-founder of WEI. More than anyone else, Jan, Bob, and their grandson Jonathan are responsible for bringing WEI out of the dark ages of international postal teaching into the 21st century of the internet. By paying out of their own pockets for the development of the original WEI teaching website, Bob and Jan laid up infinite treasure in heaven. I'm told thousands of students who have been led to Christ will ultimately join them in heaven and thank them for the eternal impact that they have had on their lives. We weep for ourselves as we say goodbye for a while, yet at the same time, we all rejoice over Bob's victory in Jesus. In lieu of flowers, contributions can be made to the World English Institute. Be with me, Lord. second eldest grandchild for Malcolm and uh, lead us in prayer in scripture. This is Daniel. From 1 Thessalonians. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Let's pray. Father in heaven, our only hope Near us now as we embrace our sorrows, remember the many joys, 
and remind each other of the hope that remains in you. We're here today in grateful witness to the blessings you gave us, countless people across the globe, from the gift of life to Bob Powell, Papa, who knew and loved us well. It is words, affections, and life still shape us, both in the remembering of them and in the continued activity set forth by them. Father, let us not seek to avoid our sadness today. Rather, help us speak good words. Passion, comfort, and grace. Let us love each other well as we have lost one we love. Let us also be caretakers of the story of Papa's life, the love you showed, the work he did for your kingdom, and the good memories we share of our time with him. While we mourn today, we do not grieve without hope. No, we live in expectation of the day we, we see the whole left in our lives with his passing filled. For we've been given hope through Jesus that death will one day give way to resurrection. Our losses today will be restored. right to both grief and still rejoice to know of your son's resurrection and Christ's promised restoration. Father, as you promised, wherever your children are gathered, you will be present. Be present with us today this grief and joy. Bless our gathering here, those right now, here and those further apart, but mourning also. Grant your comfort as we both grieve and rejoice over the life and our memories of Papa. Amen. Be with me, Lord. <laughs> I might would have recognized that really. Lord speak to me Lord speak to me Thy name. 
mom and dad would say, uh, their son-in-law or son-in-love, Mel Witcher will give the eulogy. Well, I thought I had it until my son led, uh, led the prayer. Now, uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, you see in the program a couple of scriptures that uh, when they called and said, what would you like in the program? Uh, these are ones that are, are meaningful, especially in this time. However, when they called, the first one Jan came up with was a passage out of Philippians. I'd like to use that as a text this morning, for, or this afternoon, excuse me, for us to think about Bob's life and for me to tell a few more stories. I'm going to be reading from a version that Bob and Jan loved. This is the easy to read version that they sent around to people for, uh, to learn English because it's written at a very simple level, I'd like to share this passage with you from Philippians chapter 2. In the context, Paul is writing to a church he loves who sent him some help, some financial help that he's so gladly accepted, and he's reminding them about the importance of their lives, especially in this culture, that they learn to get along and show God's love in their life. So, from Philippians chapter 2. Think about what we have in Christ, the encouragement he's brought us, the comfort of his love, our sharing in his spirit, the mercy and kindness he's shown us. If you enjoy these blessings, then do what will make my joy complete. Agree with each other. Show your love for each other. Be united in your goals and in the way you think. In whatever you do, don't let selfishness or pride be your guide. Be humble. Honor others more than yourself. Key phrase. Don't be interested in your own life, but care about the lives of others also. In your life together, think the way Christ Jesus thought. He was like God in every way, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to use for his own benefit. Instead, he gave up everything, even his place with God. He accepted the role of a servant, appearing in human form. And during his life as a man, he humbled himself by being fully obedient to God, even when that caused him to die. And die he did on the cross. Yet God raised him up to the most important place and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. God did this so that every person will bow down to honor the name of Jesus in heaven and on earth and under the earth will bow and they will all confess Jesus Christ is Lord and this will bring glory to God the Father dear friend as you've always obeyed what you were taught and just as you obeyed when I was with you it's even more important now that you obey since I'm not here you must continue to live in a way that gives meaning to your salvation. Do this out of fear and respect for God. Yes, it is God who's working in you. He helps you to want to do what pleases Him. And He gives you the power to do it. May God bless the reading and hearing of His Word. I remember the first time I met Bob. I drove 1,200 miles from Abilene to South Carolina to ask for this young lady's hand in marriage. And after meeting Bob at the car, I didn't see him for the next several days. He just disappeared on me. Uh, in fact, he was underneath the car with his hood down working on the car constantly. I'd come down there, hi, Bob. Hi. <laughs> Judy had to finally go to Jan and say, tell him we need to talk to him. So we finally did. The conversation went well, obviously, 40, almost 44 years later, it went all right. Uh, but that shows something about Bob. Number one, he cares for his family. He cared for his family so deeply. He did not want his beautiful young daughter to go off with this hairy-legged boy he'd just met. <laughs> 
it also shows you something else. It was never about Bob. It was always about the others in his life and what they needed and what they wanted. In fact, Paul, in writing Philippians, right after this passage, he immediately goes and says, Hey, let me tell you about Timothy. There's nobody like him who thinks about others before himself. And in Epaphroditus, he almost died for the sake of the gospel. And even me, Paul, yeah, I was a bad guy, but once I saw the grace of God, I changed. Because, you see, Paul knows that the gospel is seen in human lives. And that's what Bob gave us an image of what Christ is and does in this place. He was an engineer. He told me the one thing he loved about engineering was it was a different problem every day. Every day it was some new problem. I went, oh, that's awful. I can't imagine. But he loved a different problem because it took him out of himself. He was focused on that that was in front of him. And he would come up with a new creative way to meet whatever new problem was there in front of him. In fact, during his time as a shepherd of two congregations, uh, North Augusta and Alma, he said one of the most frustrating things was that people wouldn't do what he told them to do. <laughs> they weren't like the machines he was dealing with. He would tell them and they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't follow his instructions, or better yet, God's instructions. But when they did, they found that it actually worked. And many did. And they're faithful believers now. And some have gone on. They're waiting along with Bob for the resurrection. Well, in 2003, Bob and Jan moved here to Round Rock. And he traded one set of focuses, foci for his life for another. Instead of creating uh, packaging for radioactive materials, he sewed Barbie dolls and <laughs> curtains. All right. Instead of analyzing chemicals, he made recipes and then explained to his grandchildren in great detail why this worked in this particular way when you put this amount of heat to it. And it was, it was really sort of a marvelous explanation and marvelous thing to watch. Uh, but above all, he and Jan spent untold hours in front of those laptops with World English Institute, sharing their faith with those who were looking for Jesus even if they didn't know. And with those who had been found by Jesus and desperately wanted to tell somebody. So that's who they were. In fact, when the Iron Curtain came down, Jan had come up several years ago earlier with an idea for teaching the old snail mail WEI through email. And then they went one better. They created a website. And all of a sudden, when the Iron Curtain came down, anyone in the world could get access to that within moments. And Bob and Jonathan, working together, built that website. Jan helped them figure out how to, what to load up on it. Who knows how many lives have been touched? How many folks will be there to greet us? because they had a vision and a life that reflected the glory of God. So, as we close, I'd like to do a paraphrase with great apologies to a Christian writer, a musician named Ray Bolts. He wrote a song many, many years ago that hit me hard. And I hope I can get through it. <laughs> But uh, paraphrase goes something like this. I imagined I was in heaven and, and Bob was there with me. We walked along the streets of gold beside a crystal sea. We heard angels singing and then someone called his name. We turned, we saw a young man smiling as he came. He said, Mr. Tao, 
you may not recognize me, but if you look again, you led my Boy Scout troop when I was only 10. And I saw the God you serve, and I saw it in your children and your wife. And through that, I learned to recognize God's work in my life. So thank you for giving to the Lord. I have a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm so glad you did. Then a small group approached us and said, Do you remember the wall? Just as God did in Jericho. He made it in Berlin. Again, fall. And you and Jan and Jonathan worked hours and you created a new way to share the word with those who had never heard that's why we're all here today so thank you for giving to the Lord we have lives that were changed thank you for giving to the Lord we're so glad But then they kept on coming, far as the eye could see, each somehow touched by this generosity. Little things Bob and Jan had done, sacrifices made, on earth unnoticed, in heaven on full display. told in heaven you're not supposed to cry but you know I can imagine a tear in Bob's eye as he came before the throne and he faced the Lord who said to him God look around you great is your reward Thank you, Jan. Thank you, all of you, who are giving to the Lord. I have a life that's been changed. Thank you. I'm so glad you gave. Thank you again for joining us. with a, a benediction and then we're going to have another song and I think a closing prayer I forgot and it. our cousin John will also lead us in a prayer John will lead us in prayer and thanks. But closing benediction this is one that I learned many many years ago and again especially as we close that passage in Philippians that says that God will give us power this is how Paul closes his prayer in the Ephesians Ephesians chapter 3 now to him who is able to do, and in fact, in the life of his servant Bob, has done more, immeasurably more than all we can ask or even imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And let all God's people say with me, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Mel. Um, Mom and Dad have two children, me and my sister. But we have cousins that I count as brothers, too. Uh, Michael over there and John at this time. Are you hiding, John? There you are. John will lead us in closing prayer, but then we will sing the last song, He Leadeth Me, and dismiss in that way.
father. Today, help us celebrate you gaining our earthly father. into your army of angels. He was truly an angel, as you know. Comfort those who are missing him today, those of us. Help us to celebrate him and his incredible life. Help us to remember those moments, those pearls of wisdom that Papa Bob left and weave them into our own lives. The stories we tell will encourage us and help us to remember others. His legacy will live on. And Lord, that is something that we humbly ask you to remind us as the days go on. We choose to celebrate him as we celebrate you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
by your attendance today. Thank you for coming. Please be careful when you go home to your respective places. And uh, my mother would like to see everyone who is here. But she's going to remain stationary. Don't fall in the hole. Is that a bad joke? Thank you for coming. We're dismissed. Thank you. Everybody there knows somebody that lost their house. Unfortunately, as of now, I'm not going to be able to do it. It's just been that hard. Tuesday afternoon, I was reading this radio. Wednesday, she had a dialysis treatment. Now that they're in town. I wasn't